okay so continuing uh, from where we left in the previous video uh, now we are going to solve a numerical example of bridge design uh, what this statement says that a design of simply supported slab bridge for hl93 live load the given data is a span length of 35 feet center to center of bearings roadway width is 44 feet curb to curb so length is 35 and width is 44 keep in mind okay allow for a future wearing surface of a 3 inch thick bituminous overlay uh, the material strength uh, concrete strength is 4000 psi and steel yield strength is 60000 psi from the figure you can clearly see the uh, data that has been provided uh, right here is the length or the span of the bridge which is 35 feet and uh, this is the top view it shows you the center line of the bridge or the road and uh, the width of the bridge the 12 feet uh, wide lanes with the 10 feet shoulders on either side so the total width is 44 feet and uh, this is the sectional detail the thickness of this slab <clears throat> which need to be designed uh, a future wearing course of uh, 3 inch after the casting of the deck slab the total width uh, is equal to 44 feet from curb to curb and when you include the uh, uh, the width of the barriers which is 15 inch in on either side the total width comes out to be 46 and a half feet so this is the given data or the dimensions of the uh, bridge so now coming to the solution step number one as we already know that the uh, defining the sizes uh, of the uh, bridge members the span length of bridge is given as 35 feet center to center and the clear roadway width is 44 feet curb to curb for a curb width of 15 inches as we uh, saw in previous slide total width of the bridge comes out to be 44 plus both sides of the curb comes out to be 46 and a half feet Minimum thickness of bridge slab is given by the formula H minimum is equal to 1.2 into S which is the span length plus 10 divided by 30. Uh, from this formula we get a total width of 1.8 feet which is almost equivalent to 22 inches. So the deck slab thickness is uh, 22 inches from this formula. Coming to the second step. Uh, the calculation of loads so we know the thickness of this slab which is 22 inches multiplying by the unit weight the dead load of uh, uh, slab is 0.275 ksf we know the future uh, thickness of wearing surface which is 3 inches so multiplying with its unit weight we get the uh, surface load uh, wearing surface load which is 0.035 ksf so we have calculated the dead loads and the dead load moments uh, when, once we calculated the loads we can then analyze for the dead load the dead load moments we already know the formula wdc s squared by 8 and wdw s squared by 8 so 42 kip fit per fit and 5.3 kip fit per fit okay these are the moments due to the dead loads the concrete and the bitumen dead loads now after the dead load moment we are uh, concerning about the live load moment and uh, as you know that there are three types of lo uh, loading where we consider for the live load analysis the hl93 truck tandem and the uh, lane load so putting the live load uh, the truck load as we already uh, discussed in the previous video that uh, the distance between the uh, middle axle and the rear axle should be 14 feet and the middle axle should be at the middle of the uh, span so it will give us the maximum bending moment so in this case uh, the maximum bending moment turns out to be 350 kip fit and you can calculate it simply for example the total load is uh, 72 kips uh, so uh, load will be uh, you can calculate the reactions 45.6 and 26.4 kip because 8 kip is on this side so uh, due to these reactions you can draw the shear force diagram and uh, with the help of this shear force diagram you can draw the bending moment diagram so 
uh, either method that suits you you can uh, go for and calculate this maximum bending moment which comes out to be 350 hip fit okay similarly you can put the tandem load uh, 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 with the two feet distance from the uh, center of the span uh, of the either load so uh, in this case the maximum bending moment comes out to be 372 feet kip and the lane load movement is uh, 0.64 into uh, s squared divided by 8 so you have to add lane load with the tandem and the truck load and the maximum bending moment will be used in the uh, design case so in our case we got tandem moment uh, greater than the truck moment therefore we will use the tandem moment so our live load movement including impact okay including impact you know the im so uh, live load plus impact moment will be equal to 1.33 into tandem moment plus plane moment so you just put the values and you will get the total live load moment which is 593 kip fit to convert this live load plus impact moment to moment per fit this is kip fit moment per fit you divide the moment by the design lane width so now you have to determine the uh, lane width uh, the design lane width okay so as we already know that design lane width you have to consider several cases for example for single lane loaded there is a different formula you know the l1 and w1 in this case l1 is minimum of s which is 35 feet and 60 feet so which one is minimum you can clearly see that 35 feet is the minimum one so l1 is 35 feet what is w1 which is modified h to h width which is 46.5 feet as we calculated at the start of this problem or 30 feet so which one is minimum 30 feet so we are using w1 as 30 so putting l1 and w1 in this equation we will get the value of e which is 14.3 feet okay so this is the design lane width for single lane loaded now we will see for the multiple lane loaded so for the case of multi-lane loaded the formula is here you know what is l1 what is w1 you just need to know the uh, nl which is the number of design lanes so uh, you know what is w which is 44 in our case the curve to curve distance right so you just uh, uh, put the values and you will get three so there, there are three number of design lanes now putting all the values in this equation we will get 11.84 feet which should not be less than or equal to this 15.5 so which one is governing our uh, design lane width that is of course you are right a is equal to 11.84 feet because this is the minimum of all of three uh, values the 15.5 and the one we uh, saw on previous slide okay so our design lane width is 11.84 feet we will divide the uh, live load moment by this value to get the moment in keep fit per fit okay so as i told you that we will divide the live load moment uh, by this value so we will get 50 keep fit per fit now we have all the moments in the same units so just apply the the factors and uh, put the values and you will get a total bending moment of 1863.6 inch kip per fit okay this value is in fit kip you just multiply it by 12 and you will get the results in inch kip now you have to design for this bending moment so coming to the design part uh, we know that the moment maximum moment or ultimate moment is 1863.6 inch kip per fit the effective depth of bridge slab which is equal to the total thickness minus the cover minus the half of the die of the bar so using number 8 bar the effective depth is bottom cover for slab is taken equal to 1 inch so you have 1 inch cover half inch uh, uh, half into 1 so half inch of this and h you have 22 so 22 minus 1 inch cover minus half of the bar it gives you 20.5 inches of effective depth now as yes, minimum we have a formula for grade 60 which is 0 0.0018 into 12 into 22 you know the 22 which is h and h you are uh, 12 you are uh, uh, solving for a unit uh, strip of one feet width so you have got 0.47 square inches as yes, minimum now 
uh, using the formula uh, for the finding the area of steel uh, you have uh, different trials and errors where you start with the let a is equal to 0.2d and you perform different trials and errors and the final result that you get is area of steel to be 1.8 square inches per feet okay so uh, it is greater than as minimum so for this area you have to find the bars which is number four at four inches center to center this is your design for uh, for the uh, moment that uh, uh, you got 1863.6 inch k per feet so once you got the main reinforcement then the second thing is to uh, select the distribution reinforcement in the bottom transports direction as we seen in the video of uh, previous uh, uh, so uh, last seen a uh, last uh, slide of previous video the amount of bottom transfer reinforcement may be taken as a percentage of the main reinforcement required for positive movement as follows but not less than shrinkage reinforcement okay so if you remember this was a formula that uh, 100 divided by under root s or 50 percent of main reinforcement but it should not be less than the shrinkage reinforcement okay so what we get from here is 16.9 percent less than 50 percent okay so 16.9 percent is 0.304 square inches but uh, is it less than shrinkage reinforcement yes see the shrinkage reinforcement is 0.47 uh, square inches so which one is governing the shrinkage reinforcement is governing so in the transverse direction you are not going to provide this reinforcement but you are going to provide the shrinkage reinforcement which is number five at eight inches center to center okay similarly coming to the distribution reinforcement uh, uh, that we have designed on the previous slide so it's maximum spacing for temperature steel reinforcement in one way slab according to ACI 77621 is minimum of these two 5 into HF which gives 110 uh, inches and the other one is 18 inches so what we have provided is 8 inches and it is less than both of them so okay therefore number 5 at 8 inches center to center is okay for the shrink uh, distribution reinforcement in the bottom transverse direction so once uh, done with the main and uh, uh, transverse reinforcement in the bottom direction now we are concerned with the uh, top face of the slab the shrinkage and temperature reinforcement for grade 60 we have a formula we have putting the values which is 0.47 square inches we provide number 5 at 8 inches center to center finally use this reinforcement in both the directions at the top face of the slab now the final recommendations is main steel longitudinal steel in bottom number 8 at 4 inches center to center at bottom the transverse reinforcement is number 5 at 8 inches center to center throughout and at the top both longitudinal and transverse directions use number 5 at 8 inches center to center so this is your final design of the slab uh, bridge uh, of the concrete dimensions as well as the steel uh, ratio and uh, this is the drafting of your slab see at the bottom what you see is these are the main uh, the dot dot are the main reinforcement longitudinal reinforcement which are number eight at four inches center to center this continuous bar it is the transverse reinforcement and it is what number five at eight inches center to center see they have uh, mentioned in the brackets as well however in the top both the longitudinal transverse reinforcements are shrinkage reinforcement which is number five at eight inches center to center in both directions the total thickness of these uh, deck slab is 22 inches first bar to be provided is at 3.5 inches from the face of the uh, uh, not uh, this support okay the total width is uh, 46.5 feet and uh, yeah, the, the figure is presenting for half of the slab so this is uh, the drafting of the uh, design that we have performed on previous slides and uh, this is the figure of one of the uh, bridges that have been constructed in Pakistan. Uh, this is a, a, a box girder bridge constructed at, in a, at a Indus River at a Atak. Uh, if you wanted to know the size of this box girder, then just look at this truck. The truck, the size of the truck, and then imagine the depth of uh, the section uh, right at this point. 
so this is a huge uh, box border bridge which is designed at this section